All right. Good afternoon. My name is Neil Solomon. And my name is Alexandra Hayden. We have created this solution to possibly dispense food pellets in an astronaut's helmet. This, in this presentation, we will demonstrate the complexity and simplicity of our design, the feedings. Or feeding executed by sending a sensor that's mechanical and electric. Here's how our state-of-the-art project works. Firstly, the astronaut will be able to load nine pellets at a 0.75 inch diameter, followed by the plunger, spring, and cap. The first pellet will fall into the bottom arm, instantly where it waits for the initial button push. Once the button is pushed, the bottom arm will extend forward, allowing the astronaut to see and remove the pellet for easy consumption. Afterwards, the bottom arm moves back to its original position, which then initiates the spring-loaded mechanism located inside the top arm and allows the next pellet to drop, ending the sequence until the next time the button is pushed. Um, the electrical components that make our invention function are located in this basic component box, which can be placed anywhere in the actual helmet. However, for display purposes, we have attached it to the stand. The box houses the Arduino Nano and 5000 milliamp portable charger, which is wired to it to provide power. The button can be placed at any location on or in the spacesuit, as long as it can reach the component box via a wire. Uh, another feature that displays the flexibility of our design is that the top arm can be shorter to carry fewer pellets or longer for more. But the dispenser is not limited to the way it is displayed. There are many different ways to position the dispenser itself and the button. As long as the dispenser's bottom arm can extend far enough to the front of the astronaut's face, it can be placed anywhere in the actual helmet. The Arduino Nano controls the servo's movements that follows the button push due to the button being wired to the reset pin. We have chosen to use a portable charger so that while not in use, the battery can be easily stored away if needed. We have a set of cleaning brushes to go along with the dispenser. The use of the brush is universal for most of the project. You can use it to clean both the top arm and the area of the bottom arm where the food is dispensed. And now we will move on to the slides so you can take a peek at the voyage we went through to create the project before you. Thank you. It all began with the research. Starting from a Nerf gun magazine, we gathered ideas of possible mechanisms to use within our project. We learned about potential electronics we could use, such as Arduinos, RF sensors, and IR sensors. Lastly, we explored the different types of springs to find the perfect fit for our project. Having our fundamental ideas, we began brainstorming and generating concepts built off of our research. Some examples were putting a button on the inside of the helmet creating some type of lever to get the pellets out into the astronaut or a possible switch to put on the helmet's exterior. We formulated a lot of ideas, yet not all of them made it into our final project. The following slides present the initial designs we developed. After sketching out our ideas, we began to design them in Inventor 2018 and 2020. We then 3D printed the pieces to create our first prototype. This design functioned yet not as intended. We therefore concluded that many changes needed to be made and things were in need of being purchased. In these foreseen slides, we have our second and final prototype drawings. The second prototype drawings eventually made us aware of the areas that needed modification and more attention. We put our brains together, tweaked our design, added a few features that made the dispenser more efficient, functional, and attention-grabbing.
which then led to our final prototype. Here we have the top arm, which stores the food pellets. And then we have the bottom arm, which extends and contracts. The cap, which screws onto the top arm to secure the pellets, spring, and plunger. The gear, which attaches to the servo and, to, and works to drive the bottom arm. The plunger, which pushes pellets to the top arm. Lastly, we have the spring. As the spring relieves tension, it aids the plunger in its function. The following drawings are our official assembly and presentation drawings of the feed meat. Both of these sheets showcase our custom-made, currently plastic but will be aluminum, parts and display them in their proper positions. The parts you see on your screen are the same ones used in the prototype, except for the spring. Here we have the brochure we used to briefly explain our project's functionality as well as display a few images. Here are the engineering notebooks entries we use to keep our thoughts, innovations, and ideas about our project. In these first few entries, we drew out our initial designs, which is the first sketch slide you all saw before. And we also established where the moving arm will be positioned, which we chose for it to be under the arm. This entry says we were going to use a pump shotgun mechanism for the moving arm, which in turn was still used in our final project. We also establish how much food we need and how we can execute this task. This entry from November 2nd of 2020 is when we calculated the number of pellets our top arm would be holding, as well as the overall length of the arm. The prototype arm is one fourth the circumference of the interior of the helmet. Two days later, we decided on how the part of the bottom arm where the food is dispensed would look using this cup holder as a reference. Another couple of days passed and we decided we would like to use electronics for our project and began looking into how we could go about it. These next few entries from November 9th to 17th are when we research to find and establish what type of spring we need and how properly to use it. We settled on how long the spring needs to be as well. Then we decided to make a few changes to our project and we also started looking into radio frequency transceiver as well as infrared sensors. Then we learned that a radio frequency transmitter works well in space and that we can make a remote button if we do so. Lastly, for our highlighted entries, we have our most current achievements. Those being placing both second and fifth place for our prototype and drawing of our dispenser at the TSA regional competition. And making the finalist list for this program and place second at the TSA state competition for the feed me. And here we have a video that talks about technology, our future, and how would these videos and how these have helped us. Oh, did we lose it? Are you through? Uh, Are you through the video? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank it. you. You to share it. <laughs> Are you ready for some questions? No, no we're not we're trying yet. To... We're trying to find the video. Okay. Glenn, are you hooked oh, in? I can't see it. Oh. It's not being shared right now. We we heard part of it, but you're not sharing the video. Oh. It's it's that one, the third one. Oh. No, no. Yeah, that. Yeah. And then the this one. Ah, there you go. Uh, sorry. Oh, we can't hear you very well on there. So if you can narrate it, that would be good for us. Yeah, we, can we can't see hear it. it. We can't hear it, but we can see it. So this video is just us talking about using the technology to create our project. So we just have a couple of visuals in the video. OK. Yeah. 
you guys hear it? No, no we can't hear it at all. No, I was what you're saying there. I'm sorry. We're talking about how we use it, how we use our project to prepare ourselves for the future. Excellent. And we just learned a bunch of stuff from this project that will help us when we decide to become engineers or pursue careers in the technical field. Excellent. Those are the 3D printers at my dad's house. That's a lot of printers at a house. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. All right. That's awesome. Our project is the future for feeding astronauts during a spacewalk. Thank you for allowing us to experience their journey, better known as the engineering design process, which in turn shine the light on the creativity and innovation. We have encountered obstacles along the way, but have managed to overcome these and create the food bike dispenser before us. We hope that our project will literally be out of this world. <laughs> Very good. Very cool. Okay. Excellent job, ladies. Uh, I was very impressed. Questions and answers or comments? Questions? You guys can ask questions now. When the uh, food particle comes in front of your mouth, you use suction to pull it towards your, your mouth? You can just grab it with your teeth. Anything works. Okay. And so, yeah. So, when it comes forward, it's just like this little thing. So if you had your teeth, you just like take it out with your teeth. Okay. Oh, okay. Is, is it held in that location? I mean, would it fall off if I was tilted in the wrong direction? Um, it should hold because we have like a little like lip on it. So yeah, yeah. So so part of it's being held in by gravity at the moment. Is that correct? Um, I mean, yeah. Okay, and th and that's all right. We expect it to be in a gra uh, you know, on Mars or the Moon, so that and it has gravity, so that's good. Question: So here we can see that it's. Uh, I like your prototype. Um, however, we can see that it's also a little bit big still. Did you have plans as to how you would make it smaller? You could just shorten the arm but then that wouldn't allow you to carry as many pellets or you could shorten the spring because we have a spring in here right now um, and if you just made a shorter spring and carried less pellets then you can make the arm shorter and then as long as this red arm the bottom one is long enough to reach the astronaut's face it can be whatever size you need okay and, and part of what i was thinking about was the electronics package right uh, yeah, right now it's this portable charger and then the Arduino Nano in there. So obviously we don't have high tech NASA <laughs> electronics, but you could always make it smaller, skinnier based on what type of battery and computer you're using. OK, very good. The largest thing there is the battery, correct? Yeah, it's a little big. It's a 5,000 milliamp portable charger we have right now. As long as it can, can prov provide power, the battery can be any size. It doesn't have to be sure. necessary. Sure. And, and, and the red arm, uh, if you could put more stuff behind the astronaut's head and the red arm just extend further a little bit so that there's something not bulky beside their head. Mm -hmm. okay. Good comments. Any other comments or thoughts? Super awesome job. Thank we you. are impressed. Blown away. Thank you. Thank you. Very nicely done.